Hello everyone, I'm Lazy Grouse, and welcome to some more Prince of Darkness in CK3. And we're gonna play as a Ravnos Vampire this time, which I think is one of the clans we've interacted with the least in this mod, probably because I think most of them live in India, or maybe I just haven't noticed them when they popped up. But Clan Ravnos is a deeply divided clan. The Ravnos originated from India, but have been known to wander far and wide. Powerful rulers in their homeland, they're less entrenched in the west, where they're merely known as wanderers, tricksters, mystics and vagabonds. Eastern Ravnos has their own caste system, developed from the lineages that descended from Saptasura, their alleged founder. For their part, each Ravnos exudes has different views, values and motivations, resulting in a multitude of branches, or castes, of the Indian main clan within Europe. So, yeah. They're basically just uh, hobo or traveling circus performers because they're very well known for their illusion magic or whatever you want to call it. But they're despised in the western world, world and caught in an eternal war against a mortal foe in India. The future clan of Ravnos will be hard fought, there is much to be done. But we're not really gonna care too much about that because we're not gonna interact that much with India. Because we're gonna be playing as Iago Castillo which is also known as the Pirate Prince. So we're gonna terrorize and plunder the Mediterranean and just have a good time. So we are Castilian, we live on Corsica, and the Pirate Prince of Medi the Mediterranean is a shrewd captain who was embraced in Clan Ravnos by Carmenita Yoriari. Their, their views soon clash though, with the patient sire disliking her child's fiery temper. As such, Iago quickly escaped from her grasp to Corsica. Proving himself a charismatic leader, Iago has fully embraced his new life as a greedy and deceitful pirate. Underestimating him would be a mistake though, as his skill for intrigue and manipulation has left many pursuers dead in their tracks. There is money to be made and arrogant princes to take down a notch or two. The Mediterranean is yours for the taking. So yeah, we're just gonna plunder and have a good time. So let's just get in there. So, we start as the Duke of Corsica. But you might have noticed that we only hold a small part of it, even though we are the duke. So we're gonna have to do some early conquests, because this island belongs to us. But before we start taking what's ours, we got a lot of things to look at, starting with us. So, we are Duke Iago Castile, the Sybarite, which I don't know what it means, pirate of Corsica. And we are pretty old, well, we're very old, but as a vampire in this age, we are pretty old. And we are lustful, greedy, and deceitful, which are just perfect encapsulations of uh, a vampire pirate, I think. We're also a flamboyant trickster, schemer, which means we have some uh, intrigue points that we're gonna have a look at. We got animalism, dominate, and chemistry advanced, which is the special discipline of, uh, of the Ravnos, which is basically illusionism, which is pretty cool. And we're gonna play around with that. I don't know exactly how to use it, because I've never played a Ravnos Vampire before. But we're gonna figure it out, and I'm sure it's gonna be fun. We're also a famous reveler, so we like to party. We're quick, Vampire, Ravnos, and 7th generation, which is kinda low for a almost 800 year old Vampire, I think. Either way, we got mediocre diplomacy, pretty good martial, mediocre stewardship, Pretty good intrigue and not great learning. But overall, pretty pretty decent stats, we can work with this. We're not the greatest fighter, at least not in the vampire world, but it's pretty alright. And we are the Path of Paradox. And we'll have a look at that in just a sec. But first, let's take a look at our little extra lore tidbit. The Prince of Pirates is an infamous captain known as Remorseless Sybarite. The Ravnos heresy preaching pleasure and greed above all else. Oh, is that what a Sybarite is? I either way, Iago is perhaps the most fearsome advocate, as his relentless pursuit of wealth and power has not dulled his sharp mind. The pirate captain is indeed known as shrewd diplomat and even more skilled manipulator, helping him having contacts in every port of the Mediterranean recently, Iago has, for all in intents and purposes, secured Toulon as a safe harbor for his fleet. And many fear that this is only the start of a new age of raid and plunder. 
Future Faden Cannon, Yago will soon kill the Prince of Toulon himself before impersonating him to the neighboring courts. Nobody will suspect a thing until Yago Castile truly rules the waves. I don't know what Toulon is, but we should probably have a look. I bet that is a title. Um, Toulon. Where is that? Barony of Toulon. It is... Oh, it's French. Or Savoyan, or whatever you want to call it. Which makes sense. It kind of sounds like it, but I don't know French uh, geography. Barely know Swedish geography. <laughs> but I think that's all there is to know about us, really. So we are in the house of Sybarite. Okay, so Sybarite is just our house. That makes sense. Don't have any legacies yet, but we are not the... Well, we are the head of, I guess, our house, but we're not head of our dynasty. So we can't start picking that. We're gonna have to wait for someone else. But they usually go with the, like, the clan-specific line. And we got some good stuff here. Uh, lots of good heavy cab. We got some um, insect men-at-arms, which could be fun. Legacy of Hazimel, which will give us a special character interaction to gain wisdom, which is super cool. Because I have played the first like year and uh, it's a fun interaction and I'm looking forward to use it. Got some prestige and some dread and tyranny gain, which is gonna fit us like a glove. And the Path of Paradox is uh, Carnal Exaltation, Hedonistic, and Sacred Lies. So we basically got the religion of sex, drugs, and rock and roll with a little bit of murder. So that's gonna be great. We are... We got two of these, right? Yeah, we got two, uh, two virtuous traits. So we're gonna get loads of piety, so we can spend that all we want. Other than that, I don't think there's anything in particular with our religion that we need to keep an eye on. So, yeah, that's gonna be fine. We are Castilian, and that is gonna be martial admiration. So, we like knights, we like castles, we like knights. <laughs> uh, we are tabletop warriors, so we're more strategic than we are prowess. And we get some speed, which is kind of nice. And ritualized friendship, so we love having friends. So we're gonna make lots of friends and probably lots of enemies, as usual. And we're gonna wait with the lifestyle until we get our hunting preferences. And I guess this is our capital. We don't have anything in particular here, although we should start constructing this right away. Can't believe we don't have the Princeton building. We usually get to start with that. But either way. We have some <laughs> absolute dog shit champions. We're gonna have to fix that. Very few levies. We got some ghouls and some uh, caballeros, at least, which is pretty nice. Although these are probably not gonna be good in the mountains, which is everything <laughs> on Corsica. So that doesn't fit us very well, but who cares? Our council is absolutely terrible. Everyone better. No, you are terrible. Anyone here? Well, you're not the worst. You are a better spy master, though. So let's uh, swap these two. And uh, yeah, let's just assign you, I suppose. We don't really have any powerful vassals, so it doesn't really matter. Stewardship, we got... Oh, you are an excellent marshal, though. Yeah, get in there. And... Uh, yeah, okay, I guess you're the best for the, jo the job, except for you, but you're... You're gonna be a marshal, obviously. Oh, but you're the chaplain, and the chaplain was... Yeah, okay. I think that's as good as we're gonna get. But we can marry all of these off. Oh, but before we do that, we, we need to marry us off. So, you are a little bit far away. You are a little bit closer. That's pretty good. You just have to go through Lombardy. And you are even further away. So I think we're just going to go with one of these. They're all in the same house. Not going to marry you because I would like to have our wife on the council. And I guess you got the best stats, kind of. Also, you're a pretty good fighter. You are pretty good. I like you. You're pretty and you're a mystic. 
Oh, and you are actually a Ravnos. Neat. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, you're you're gonna be great. We're gonna marry you. We're both gonna get some prestige, which is excellent. And let's just actually let that marriage go through. There we go. We got ourselves a beautiful, well, I guess pretty wife. And uh, I guess she's just gonna assist ruler. Which is just gonna increase all of our stats by one, which is gonna be just great. Uh, courtiers, we're not gonna do anything with that. Factions, we don't have anything, but decisions. Western East, this is a Ravnos decision. And basically, you are part of the smaller minority of clan Ravnos not dwelling in India. This exodus has caused much trouble to your kin as you are barely acknowledged by as a Knight. But perhaps you can endure and even thrive in these circumstances. So, we can unify the western clans by getting a realm size of 100. So, we'll see about that. I'm not sure we're gonna go all in on blobbing. We might. We'll see where this campaign takes us. But we'll see if that's even gonna be a goal. We have Ravnos Jati. The clan Ravnos is divided between numerous Jati, the castes, each pursuing its own goal. If you were to achieve those, the spirit of your jati as a whole would improve. So, we right now, we... Well, we actually have a lot of stress loss, which is nice, but people will look down on us. This is a trait that we have right now. But we'll instead get spirited house, which is basically the same, but without people disliking us. And we will need a lot of money, but we only need to control Sardinia, which uh, is going to be a little bit tricky. Because uh, there is some powerful characters here. The first wars are probably going to be pretty easy. Unless they ally to people. But the second wars are going to be a bit harder. Because we got Menele. The, I think the first, uh, the first campaign I ever played in uh, Prince of Darkness. Incredibly powerful character. And uh, might be a problem. And he is sharing the island with Helen of Troy, which is also an incredibly powerful character. So both of those are gonna be problematic, but we'll find a way to deal with them. Maybe through allies, or maybe just through opportunistic wars, or maybe we just get stronger than them. We'll see. Other than that, we do have a a va no not vampire a pirate uh, decision here. Which uh, lets us uh, do some plunder. So we'll do this um, eventually. We're not going to do it right now because I have checked it out. And it's going to cost us some champions and uh, give us a debuff. But it is going to give us lots of money. So when we're ready to send some of our champions on a vacation, we're going to hit that. But I think that's pretty much everything. So... Before we start doing stuff, we are gonna find some people to marry off our, our courtiers with. And right off the bat, you are pretty great. You're one of the best champions we, we have right now. And uh, yeah, you're a gangrel. So you're not bad. You got the, the right religion. And where do you live? Somewhere over there. So that looks perfectly fine. You... Are, oh, you're a mortal. Gross. And you are chaplain, you are champion. So, let's... Uh, well, since you are a mortal, you're probably not going to be able to get any good fighters. But let's, uh, let's start by doing according to prowess. And yeah. Just a 52-year-old one pro... A prowess person so we're just gonna go by age get someone fairly young and good enough stats just want some people in here can't make you marry anyone which is annoying can make you marry someone but you're human oh you got five prowess you might actually be a a champion and you got well you got better stats and you're slightly younger so let's bring you in and uh, yeah, just bring you in. You got decent enough stats. And I guess let's uh, find all of our... Oh, that's my wife. Oh, we're the same dynasty. Whoops. <laughs> A little bit inbreeding, but that's... That's all right. 
Oh, that was all of our people. We do not have a lot of vampires in our court. Okay, we need to fix that. <laughs> but we are gonna pause. Just let some stuff happen. Requiem for an empire. If mortal medieval Italy is, div is a divided state, then Italy by night is a powder keg. Powerful old vampires scramble for the most populous cities of Europe. The North Ventru Cardinal Fabrizio Ulfila seat in Milan, a strong grasp on the Italian church at his disposal. In Venezia, the Giovanni science uh, clan Cappadocian are masters of the sea-spanning trade empire. Uh, time will tell if their focus is on Italy proper or in the east like their parent clan. In Sicily, the capital of Clan La Sombra is guarded by, by the faithful Montano, but overextension and the civil war in Spain has left the Sea of Shadows vulnerable. Finally, all eyes are on Rome, where Titus Venturus Camille has recently awoken. The Eternal Consul was the mastermind behind Rome's empire and Carth Carthage destruction and could usher a new age for Ventru leadership. As other petty leaders and immortal kings rise elsewhere in Italy, the War of the Princess has never been more dangerous than, than here. So, Italy is gonna be problematic, but also fun. And our predatory inclination, I think we wanna, wanna go just hard on intrigue. I don't know if any of these give stewardship, but it would be nice to get up to four domain holdings. But... I feel like it's more in flavor to just use our cunning deceit to just boost that up. And uh, I like both Kaushamar, because that's just uh, sneaking into houses and drinking people. And Footpad is just uh, finding whatever rabble we can find and feed on that. Which I do like a lot. We're gonna get Obfuscate and um, 3 Intrigue, which is pretty good. So we're gonna do that, boost our intrigue a little bit, and get a powerful skill. And we got loads of marriage proposal proposals. And our story so far. Fearless Iago, you are the master of the Mediterranean. Or hope to be at least. Your pirate haven in Corsica could get you there in time. Leave the arrogant princes to their petty schemes. You know where the true power is and you are shrewd enough to take it by any means necessary. When all the sailors of the Mediterranean fear your name and your chests are bringing, brimming with gold, this is when you truly triumph. So, this is the plunder things that sails. And that's gonna be great. But with... Yeah, that doesn't matter. But with that, oh, we need this. And we already have the Chimera Chimera advanced filled up. We do have Schemer filled up, so we're gonna be able to have a bunch of schemes, we got a bunch of bonuses, so we're gonna be pretty good at scheming. And that's gonna be great, we can even kidnap people, which is always fun. And uh, we have some... Wait, did we not have any... thought it said... Oh, because of our clan we get extra experience in animalism, but I don't think we're gonna go with that right now. I think instead we might go with dominate because there's a lot of good uh, like scheming things here. So I do like dominate quite a bit. So I think we're gonna go with that. We're gonna start finding some uh, some mortals and I don't know let's just grab peasants. I don't need them to be particularly good and we don't really have the well actually we do have the piety to spare because we're gonna make lots of piety but let's now for now let's go with peasants that's gonna be fine we're gonna drink and herdify some people and uh, let's just see what we get no oh, you are actually dog shit you're pretty good because i would like to get good people but yeah these are both young, so let's herdify this guy. And let's hunt you. And we'll see what kind of uh, blood potency and uh, blood kind she has. But with that, we're gonna slow down a little bit. Oh, you're a courtier now. So let's marry some people over here. And you as well. Let's uh, marry in some people over here. Just need people. And we're gonna... 
Let's see. Any of these got any allies? Nope. Very good. And you're pretty weak. So we're going to start by holy warring. And we are going to holy war both of these, I think. Partially because uh, we can afford it. But also, I want to hold these personally. And if we just conquer them with uh, by seizing, then uh, I think we get them as a vassal. Which is not what I want with them. And they'll hate us. So we're just going to do it like this. Don't think we're going to have to... Oh, speaking of which, do we have any... Yeah, now we have some better champions thanks to some marriages. Still need way better, but we'll get there. Should have better than her at the very least, because she should have an absolutely terrible court. And are we... We are actually the best one. Well, I guess we do have pretty good marshal. So, that's fine. Let's get in there. We'll just bop him right away. And we're getting some more people. Excellent. And there we go. I think we can just zoom through that because they're just gonna jump back and forth into us while we conquer this. And oh, we got some prisoners. That is always nice to have. So let's actually... Oh, we got lots of them. So any vampire basically with uh, good enough prowess. We are basically going to negotiate release. Conversion and recruit. We cook? No. But we can demand conversion and recruit them. Because they're going to be good champions. And we might use them as... Uh, as... Uh, courtiers. And some of these we might just... Uh, drink. So, what do we need? We don't need... I think we need choleric, right? No, phlegmatic. Okay. So, if any of those are phlegmatic, we're gonna... We're gonna just... Wait, was it cleric or...? <laughs> uh, it's phlegmatic. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So... Cleric... Why isn't anyone phlegmatic? Why is everyone cleric? Well, we might just drink them anyway. Because these are all... Yeah, these are all belong to other people. And they are just humans. So I'm just gonna... We're just gonna drink these idiots. It's still... Good experience. Because I'm pretty sure... Yeah, we... Do have... Uh, no, we don't have anything here. Whoops. <laughs> okay, well, we have a level ready if we have needed. Oh, that's going to be super annoying because it's going to be constantly there. Oh, well. We're going to see if we can learn one of those eventually by maybe diablerizing or asking people to teach us. And just enforce. Excellent. We can... Instantly start fixing that control. And we're probably going to have to convert it as well. But we doubled our domain holding. Excellent. And you still don't have any vassals? You don't. So I think we're just going to declare right away. And ooh, who can... Wait, who can join? And I know that is not the best way to do this. Wait. Doesn't say who can join. Just says... Oh, I guess you can join because you're the same. But it doesn't seem to be anyone else there. Okay, so Pisa can join. Got lots of stuff, but most of that is skeletons, which is decent, but not that scary. We can we can call in allies if we have to. So let's uh, holy war. That's gonna be all right. Raise everybody, and let's have a look at your champions. You're, well, you're not a great fighter, and you only have five champions. So that is... Yeah, we definitely have, like, double the strength of champions. Although you are... Hmm. It's very annoying that you are in mountains. Because we got... We got things that aren't very good in mountains. And it is phlegmatic, right? <laughs> I need to check this every time. 
Yeah, because we have too much Choleric. We need Phlegmatic. So... Uh, just end it. We don't need it. But... Heard, you are... Oh! Well, except what? Oh, I guess that we drink. Okay. A sip. What are you gonna get? You are... Col Why is everyone choleric? Fine, just... Release him. Wait, is that not how I release him? Fine, take only a sip. Whatever. We need to find more people then. No, not manipulate herd. Uh, find mortals. Find peasants. That's fine. And, uh, okay, we can't sit here forever. Let's... Oh, we can call a house member. Where do you live? Oh, too far away. But we got so much of that, so let's just... Let's just call both of them, honestly. Let's just get this done. And, oh, they're leaving. I guess because we... Because we called in a bunch of people. Oh, you're very young. Let's certify you. And you're slightly better stats than you, so let's uh, hunt you. So, well, ah, oh, dang it. You left but came back. Why? Okay, so we're just gonna wait these guys and then we go as soon as they get here, which is now. So now we can just take them with no problem. I just got a little bit nervous because... Uh, I don't want to fight in mountains with our stuff. Why is everyone choleric? Uh, yeah. Fine, just take a sip. And you are... Oh, he, he was sanguine, right? Yes, you're sanguine. Okay, but... Oh, there we go. Release. Why wasn't that there for the other guy? Oh, there we go. Release them. We don't need them. And I really just want to find some phlegmatic people, but I guess that's... Well, hello. Anthony of Padua, patron of the lost. Well, you're a very good learning and diplomacy guy. And I think we have a pretty cheap, like, piety and brace cost, so... I think we can pull some string strings and create our first child. He can be pretty good. So, yeah. Pull some strings. Oh, who... who dares? It's Pisa. Okay, well, we're probably gonna conquer Pisa eventually. I don't mind him being our rival. Let him... let him try. So, there you are. Let's... Um, oh, right. Um, let's just switch in whoever. That's fine. And that's not what I meant to do. Let's embrace you. We're gonna make you our little... little guy. And just... let them attack into us. That's fine. And these guys barely get, got here. That's fine. Did we got any more prisoners? We got one guy. He's a human. If I drink you... You are... Co Why is everyone choleric? Jesus! <sighs> well... We're gonna... We're gonna be so ready for... <laughs> potence, celerity, or vicissitude. No, we, we can't guess vicissitude. But potence or celerity, if we could ever get that. I mean, we're still gonna take the experience we can, if, uh, if, um, uh, if we ca can get it, like, yeah, you got fortitude, so, fortitude is, no, it's potence and celerity, dang it, and you, oh, you have celerity, though, so, we can ask her to train us. Yeah, and she will accept. If your retainer 
if oh wait this is no this is uh, teaching i thought it was <laughs> the embrace but it's not if your trainer has vampiric blood in her veins but does not know what discipline you know you may train her no other way around ask for mentoring is what i want yeah okay so we need to uh, we need to try to... Okay, do we want to befriend seduce romance? I think romance. And we are going to... Let's secretly plant a letter in her chambers. My declaration of her of love for Duchess Tsula's eyes only. No one else matters. I pour my heart out page after page, my feelings growing as I finally put, it, put them into words. The ink has barely dried as I set out for Tsula's chambers. I gently place the scroll on her bolster. Will she, uh, will she lay here tonight, dreaming of me? The waiting is unbearable. The thought of rejection makes me sick to my stomach. When a reply arrives, I tear the seal with shaking hands. While I, I cannot encourage you, my liege, I am most grateful for your kind words. Yours faithfully, Tsula. Ah, dang it. But we are gonna... We're gonna keep doing it. And we're gonna see if we can... Uh, oh, first of all, we're gonna see if we can get some more prisoners. So, I guess, uh, hurtify you. And hunt you. There we go, and... Well, that wasn't the best move. There we go. Ah, uh, whatever. Okay, let's finish this. There we go. We we own our island. Perfect. So we're going to have to fix the control here as well. But uh, things are going to be great from now on. So once this finishes, we're probably just going to put our, our chaplain here. And start doing control over here. Oh, actually. We can start doing chaplain stuff right away. And I think we might have to have some upgrades. Yeah. Grab you. Grab you. Yeah, this is good. looking way better. Grab you. And grab you. There we go. Suddenly, a pretty good court. Uh, we'll wait to marry you off once you're a vampire, because then we'll get some vampire... vampire uh, things. And uh, let's just go by age. That's uh, gonna be fine. Oh, Baron, that's no good. We want you to be able to have kids. Not that uh, it's that important, but it would be nice. Everyone else is married except for my son, which is just fine. And the embrace. I have orchestrated events so that Antony of Padua has fallen within my clutches. In a secluded place, he will not be able to escape. Shall I grant immortality even if it means his damnation? Will he be grateful or will he resent me forever? Did my sire has th have these thoughts? Hey, we get phlegmatic. Man, we could have used you <laughs> in our herd. But that would have been a waste. So, yeah, embrace him. Get a bunch of that. That is perfect. Your new child has ten taken his fir first tentative steps into the night. Now experienced enough to understand how to feed... It will soon be time to begin a formal education, which will be very important for his future, but also for your relationship. What will your approach be? I I always go with free, because, uh, I mean, what's the point of having a good character if uh, we're gonna rein them in on some leash? No, 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 no. Uh, Martial Child. Vampire wars are very different than mortal ones. A matter of relative secrecy, using few numbers of elite troops, these wars require a flexible skill set. Luckily, your child seems to have a natural understanding of the challenges that such a warfare style brings to the table. How will you encourage him to use these initial successes? Well, we can give him some martial, which... I mean, I don't think any of these matter too much, but getting some extra martial is kind of nice. Don't think it's going to be in a martial position, but hey, it doesn't hurt. Let's go with that. 
Matters of faith. So far your child has followed your faith mostly because you said so. Obviously though, he is far from understanding the inner workings of the beast and how to deal with it. You will have to take some time to start part of the teaching or hire some learned pr practitioners of the road to help your progeny along. Well, we can take some stress and we'll get a lot of piety. So, the first thing to know... And, oh. Oh, wait. Negotiate an alliance. Who wants an alliance? Oh, our dear mommy. You live somewhere in, in Spain. You, you're not the worst. Yeah, you can be pretty useful. We're gonna accept that. Because we can use you to fight some stuff over here. And um, if... If you're fighting some things that aren't too bad, we'll go and help. Your new child has proven to be quite quirky in his adaptation to vampirism. He thinks that his new condition is best used at making money. He talks all day long about how immortality means easy investments, new opportunities and such nonsense. As you sigh, you console yourself by thinking that it's at least a better hobby than trying to murder you. But you might still want to bring him out of this phase of his. So, I don't want to spend that much. They are evil, but we might be able to get him to to convert. So, unless you're, you're not a zealot, you're calm and compassionate. So, you might be easy to convince. Yeah. You know what? It's fine. I don't like it, but we're going to start... Um, start uh, fabricating a hook on you because if we can get a hook we might be able to use that to convert him imprisoned count Icarius, my frugal son and heir is now held against what the shit no okay this is <laughs> this is um, a different son a son we've had for a longer time who doesn't even hang out in our in our court you're yeah you're the lord of this so yeah all right i just thought for some reason this guy got in prison how how i don't know but either way it is time for your child to be formally presented to your court or is it this traditional part of the Canite society is fraught with both opportunities and dangers, as your courtiers and vassals will certainly look for any weakness worth exploiting in your new protege. You could skip the whole affair, but this won't reflect well on you. Eh, just behave yourself. You'll be fine. And my rabid son Nicarius has been released. That's great. And he's even too far away to interact with, so it really doesn't matter. You don't need to give me pop-ups about it. During your child's presentation, one of your vassals took every opportunity available to nag on your progeny. Not good enough, not worthy of the embrace, waste of time. You can see that your child is barely keeping his temper in check at this point. You might want to intervene if you don't want these two to hate each other. I mean... Do I care that much? You're a, an okay champion. As champions go in my court. I mean, as long as they don't hate me. Although, she's just gonna be a little bit madder at me and I don't care. I wish they would have uh, given me some op some uh, opinion with him, but oh well. It's gonna be good enough. Blood. Oh, so what does she got? We have Sanguine. Eh, just take a little sip and let her go. You, however, let's... Uh, that's not how we do that. Let's uh, manipulate herd. And you are what? Wait, what are you? <laughs> Why is this so hard for me? Uh, manipulate herd. And, okay. He's done. We've done what we could. Your child has learned uh, stuff. Very good. So, we're gonna marry you off, but you are choleric. Oh, f oh fucking course you are. Are just all peasants choleric? <laughs> Either way, um, let's uh, see if we can find a spouse. And we got a master thief at the top. 
But let's uh, first of all see if we got anyone with good prowess. Not really. We don't really have any good stats either, so... We might do it with you because that is going to give us an alliance she doesn't have a a title so she's she'll come over here so i think that's pretty good yeah let's do it like that that's going to give us another courtier which is great because she should yeah she's at our court and she is a pretty good spy master actually might want to pop her in there. But my agents have made contact with Domingas, a servant in my son Anthony's of Padua's castle. With the right incentive, he's willing to start some whispers about Anthony Padua not being nearly as gallant as he seems. Oh, this is Fabricate Hook. I was wondering why I can just badmouth my son. Uh, we will ruin his reputation. No, no. Or we can start something here instead. Mm-hmm-hmm. <laughs> If you know what I mean. <laughs> um, employee under hand. Because this doesn't seem to give us a hook. Oh, we do. No, actually, we do get a hook. Uh, the scheme fabricator gains... No, wait. We don't get a hook. We just get a modifier. No, no, no. We're not going to pay for that. We're going to finish... Oh, did we stop... We stop doing stuff. Uh, well, let's start trying to befriend you then. Start to befriend, so then we'll try to soulmate this up. And uh, have we gotten the thing yet? Ooh, they have gotten far into Ravnos Legacy. That is great. So, what I want to do is we're going to do Wisdom of Hazimel. This is how we're going to end this episode. Because... Seeking wisdom, the great Hazemel paid a price for his wisdom, his eye. His example is still followed by some Ravnos to, to this night, as no one can achieve greatness without sacrifices. Not every kind is ready to sacrifice a part of their immortal body to achieve knowledge. You, unlike others, are ready to do so. Only the brave might achieve eternal wisdom. But are you strong enough to make a sacrifice with no turning back? So, we will lose our eye and we won't be able to heal it back. But we will gain Wisdom of Hazimel, which is going to give us uh, Intrigue, Learning and Prestige. But it's of course going to give us one-eyed, which I can just mouse over there. It's going to lose us some prowess. It's going to give us more Dread, even more Learning, but lose a little bit of Attraction Opinion. We can also sacrifice our leg, which is going to make us a peg leg, uh, or one-legged, uh, which is going to lower our dread or prowess even more. Some dread, attraction opinion, but more learning. But it will give us even more intrigue, learning, and prestige. But we're going to just do the eye, at least for now. And we are one-eyed. But the biggest reason why, why to do this it's because we get a we get an eye patch, so now we look like a proper pirate, and I love it. So now that we actually look like a pirate and boost our stats real nicely, we're gonna end this episode. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you want to see more, then leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.